Well, we're going to start, though, with Chelsea, who need to overturn a 1-0 first leg defeat to Borussia Dortmund in the last 16 of the Champions League tomorrow night. Head coach Graham Potter is backing his team to rise to the occasion at Stamford Bridge and progress to the last eight. Potter was in a positive mood following Saturday's much-needed win over Leeds. Big game tomorrow. It's... If it doesn't go right, is it season over for you? And what did you learn from the game in Germany that can help you tomorrow night in putting the, the result right? Well, um, I agree. It's a big, it's a big game. It's an exciting game. Chance to go through to the uh, last day of the Champions League. So a special night at Stamford Bridge. So we're really looking forward to that. Um, all our thoughts on trying to be positive and trying to go through and win the game. Um, so. In terms of what we learned from the previous game, or well, we're, we're meeting a, a, a top opponent, you can see their results in the in the Bundesliga. They're in a fantastic um, vein of form, and pretty much uh, you know winning games constantly. I think it's ten in a row. So that tells you something as a team. They're doing a lot well, attack, defend, um, good individuals, well coached. So it's um, a good challenge for us, a big challenge for us, but we're. We're excited for it and we're looking forward to it. You obviously saw Reese James was in training this morning and Golo Kante and Christian Pulisic as well. How is their fitness and are they available? And, and just particularly on Golo, can you risk him given it's been six months out straight away? Well, Reese um, will make a decision on tomorrow. Um, <clears throat> Christian's in the squad. He's, um, he's trained and training well and, and look, looking good. And then Golo is too soon for him. So he hasn't had that, I think he's had two full training sessions. So too soon, um, but he's looking, he's looking good. So we're, we're going to continue with that progress. Jacob Steinberg. Hi, Graham. Um, Hi. I understand you like to keep things quite level-headed, but after all the setbacks and, and, and the noise around the club in the last few weeks, has it dawned on you, does it hit you that this game, winning this game, could potentially kind of change the perception around you, the story around you, uh, give you more momentum um, in, in, your, in your career at Chelsea? Oh, to be honest, I'm not really thinking of it in that way. I'm just thinking about how important it is for the team, for the club. Um, as I said, it's the Champions League, a chance to get to the last eight. We're playing against the top opponent who are in a a really good vein of form so it's a huge challenge but at the same time what an opportunity Stamford Bridge is going to be rocking I'm pretty sure and we're going to give everything to to win the game and to go through just a, a, a couple for me if I may um, firstly you said Stamford Bridge will be rocking tomorrow just how much do you need it to be rocking and how much you need the fans to be on your side tomorrow given you know the criticism you've taken from them in recent weeks um, and then if you answer that, and I'll ask another one after as well. Well, uh, fans are, <laughs> fans are um, of course, always entitled for their, to air their uh, views and, and, and they've been suffering like the rest of us have in terms of uh, with the results we've had. But uh, I thought the reception we had and the support we had at the weekend was fantastic. They were behind the team um, and I think they know the importance of the game tomorrow night. They know they want the team to go through, they want the team to progress and then they know how important they are. Because in the Champions League, away from home, it's tough. We want to make sure that it's tough for, for Dortmund and we need our supporters for that. And, and also, if I, if I may just climb into your mind briefly as well, just um, how's the... No chance, um... no chance. <laughs> How's the drive into work been in the last couple of days? Because I reckon you've probably had some pretty miserable journeys into training the last few weeks. And I just wondered, do you have any special songs you play when you're in a particularly good mood in the car or anything like that? Anything been a bit different? Um, no, no, no music. Oh, um, come on, no, don't there hasn't that. been. Don't there hasn't been. That. No, no, there wasn't. I've just been um, preparing the game. So the, the, drive, the drive's not felt any different at all? You've not felt a bit more uplifted in yourself? And you said that home life has suffered a little bit in recent weeks because of the defeats. Has there been a slight upturn? Well, and of course, it's, I'm like, like everybody connected with Chelsea, it's better that you win and everybody's mood's a little bit, a little bit happier. But um, the, the, the good thing and the bad thing about the job is you've got another game pretty quickly and it's a massive game and it's a game that we need to prepare for and 
and be ready for. So as much as you can celebrate the win against Leeds, it's pretty quickly on to we play Dortmund on Tuesday. So then it's all about preparation for that. Um, I'm not complaining about that, of course, but it's... Um, so that's what we've been doing, that's the excitement. So no singing, can't give you any songs, sorry. Let's go to somebody that does love a sing-song on the way into work. That's Gary Cottrell, who was uh, at that press conference live for us at Stamford Bridge. So, Gary, you don't have to start singing, but a sense that Potter really understood the magnitude of this game ahead. Yeah, happy Mondays, uh, talking about songs and singing. Uh, not being many happy Mondays uh, around the Chelsea training ground the last uh, seven weeks or so. This Monday at the training ground, spirits a little bit higher because of that uh, victory. Lost some hours at the weekend uh, over Leeds, but uh, Graham Potter, as he said, not celebrating too much. No singing, no dancing, no music. Just concentrating on this next massive game. And he realises how massive uh, this game is for him and for Chelsea. Apart from that last bit of fun regarding his mood and any uplift in his mood as a result of getting a result, it was a fairly low-key news conference um, from Graham Potter. He's obviously got his mind very firmly on tomorrow night and just what it means to the club, to the fans, to the ownership. If Chelsea go out tomorrow night and there's a big chance of that because of the form that Borussia Dortmund is in. He touched on it there, he's quite right. Ten games this year, Borussia Dortmund. Ten wins this year, Borussia Dortmund. So if they can do a job on Chelsea, Chelsea need to score two goals at least. Don't forget, and they haven't managed to do that this year. They've only scored five in all in all games, in all competitions. So to score two in one would be something new, certainly in recent history for Chelsea. If they can't score two, they can get one. Then it'll be a, a penalty shootout. Graham Potter says they have been practising uh, penalties. They don't want it to come to that. They feel they've got enough uh, to win the game in the 90 minutes. But obviously, they're going to prepare for everything to try and make sure they stay in this competition. Because Chelsea not in the Champions League, Chelsea without any silver, where what would that mean for their transfer hopes in the summer attracting players the prestige of the club uh, and of course financially so important to be in the Champions League as well so yeah the pressure definitely on Graham Potter despite that win last time out against Leeds but we keep hearing time and again and we're hearing it again today that whatever happens tomorrow night his future as Chelsea manager isn't at the moment under immediate threat. Yeah also backing him Joe Felix I know he was at that press conference alongside Potter so he's showing some support for his head coach, isn't he? He did, yes. Uh, he's a very good uh, speaker, isn't he, uh, in English. Uh, very intelligent young man, uh, great off the pitch as, as well as on the pitch. Um, before we get to the moment where he was speaking in support of Graham Potter, and he would do that, wouldn't he? Um, it's emerged over the last uh, few days and hours that uh, even though he's been around for a long time, he's still only 23, but he seems to have been around for a long time, a very well-known, world-famous player, we've all been getting Jao Felix's name wrong, and he was keen to correct us. Apparently we've all been getting your name wrong. What? Your name... We apparently oh, yeah, yeah. pronounce it wrong. Could you tell us how to say your name? João Felix. Felix? Felix, yeah. And everyone knows you as Felix. Is that annoying? Yeah, everyone says Felix, uh, even in Spain. Just in Portugal, they say my correct name. I don't know why. I think it's not too hard to, to spell. Uh, but yeah, it's, jo it's João Felix, not Felix. Does it annoy you? Nah, I don't, I don't care. So, João Felix was asked after that whether or not this string of results that um, Chelsea have had uh, since he arrived were, were down to the players, down to him, down to the new signings, down to the whole squad, or, or down mainly to Graham Potter, the manager. And, of course, he was full of uh, defence uh, for Graham Potter. He says the players need to take more responsibility to turn this run around. Yeah, for sure. The, the fault is not about the coach or about us or... Uh, wait, it's a, the, the fault is about... Uh, of course, it's about us and about the coach, but uh, not even the players has to, um, to take all the fault and not the coach has to take all the fault. Uh, it's between, between us. Uh, we just have to, to be together and we are. Um, 
we have amazing group. Uh, the coach is with us. Uh, we are with the coach, so that's perfect. Uh, and uh, the situation will change for sure. Felix is enjoying his time here at Chelsea, despite uh, recent results. He says he likes the freedom uh, of playing uh, in the Premier League, uh, the freedom of the way Chelsea play compared to the way he was being used at Atletico Madrid. But when he was asked whether or not if Chelsea can stay in the Champions League, go all the way through to the final and win it and be in the Champions League next season, whether he would consider turning the loan into a permanent move, well, of course, he wasn't really committing on that. OK, thank you very much, Gary Cottrell.